A blackout hits major cities. Streets flood. Trains grind to a halt. Banks lose data simultaneously. A large-scale strategic attack is executed within minutes over the internet. It sounds far-fetched, but the US is taking the threat of a cyber 9-11 very seriously. Now our enemies are also seeking the ability to sabotage our power grid, our financial institutions, our air traffic control systems. We cannot look back years from now and wonder why we did nothing in the face of real threats to our security and our economy. Security experts say the threat of a cyber terror attack in Australia is just as real and escalating. Everything's interconnected in a way that it never has been in the past. So every traffic light, every building security system. I'd say it's very possible to bring down a whole city. I think it's, it's definitely a possibility and um, hackers can do this. Behind screens in control rooms everywhere, men and women finally tune the operations of our daily lives. Adjusting energy flow, changing rush hour lanes, running public transport. Just about every critical service you can think of runs off the same basic control system that dates back to the 60s. It's called SCADA. SCADA allows industrial processes to be monitored and controlled over long distances. Motors, pumps and sensors gather information from the utility and send it back via servers to a central network of computers. SCADA systems weren't designed with security in mind and certainly not cyber security. But now, more and more are being connected to the internet. There are really good reasons for wanting to be able to, to get remote access to a control system. You, something needs monitoring, you, you want to be able to do it from a convenient location. That's where the vulnerability comes in. Uh, it means that somebody else can then step into their shoes. To show how easily and quickly a SCADA system can be hijacked, Ernest Fu and his team at the Queensland University of Technology have built a miniature water facility. We've got two reservoirs. We've got a lower reservoir and a pump connecting it to an upper reservoir. So we're just moving water from that reservoir to that reservoir? Yeah. So this is basically what you'd see at a normal water facility? Yeah, yeah, it would. Once the system is hacked into, which is relatively easy to do, taking over the controls takes a couple of minutes. So we know that a particular register controls the pump. Yep. And we're, we're flooding it with a value of zero, which will turn off the pump. Pumps yeah. off? The pump's off, just like that. So is it that simple to hack into a, a larger scale version of this kind of a utility? Yep, the messages that we're sending from the laptop to our facility are the same kinds of messages that are sent to all kinds of critical infrastructure. Scary. <laughs> Very scary. Ernest has been looking at SCADA systems common in mining, gas pipelines and other critical infrastructure and finds similar flaws. So what we found is that it's really easy to attack these systems. None of the messages are authenticated, so there's no way for the system to realise that the legitimate operator is sending them the command or a hacker is sending them the command. What's escalating concern over critical infrastructure is a shift in who's doing the hacking. Increasingly, cyber attacks are politically motivated, well-funded and targeted. So it's gone from individuals with an individual cause to groups with a group cause and a lot of money behind them. And I think that's a real concern because that's a real change. And I don't think businesses are really ready for this level of change. Although it's never been officially admitted, it's thought that the US was behind one of the most successful real-world sabotages of a critical SCADA control system. In 2010, Stuxnet made the world sit up and take notice. Unwittingly introduced by a worker at Iran's nuclear enrichment plant, the Stuxnet worm created new variants of itself, each one causing centrifuges to spin too fast or too slowly and in some cases, explode. Yeah, well, I guess Stuxnet was a wake-up call for all sorts of critical infrastructure because it was the first time people had tried to actually physically damage something rather than just maliciously cause, cause grief. Transgrid operates the main electricity infrastructure across New South Wales. It's hard to overestimate the chaos that would ensue if you could knock out these big babies in a cyber attack. 
if you knocked all of the transformers out, the economic consequences would be massive. You're talking about no power for the trains, no power for the lifts in the high-rise buildings, no power for the traffic lights, um, massive impact. And how possible is that, to knock out one of these transformers, or all of them, through a cyber attack? To knock out all of them, virtually impossible, because the transformers aren't connected to the internet in any way. Um, they have self-protecting devices within them, which make sure if there's a problem with the transformer, it takes itself out of service. To control anything on this grid, you need to get through three levels of physical security and take a police-checked seat in here. So you can't access any of this system online? No, there's no connection between the SCADA and the internet. Even if you got in here, there's little way of introducing a bug into the system. There's no USB ports that are connected to anything, there's no CD drives, there's no other spots where you can plug something in. But hackers don't make a habit of using the front door. Hackers usually can break into control systems through a corporate network which has been connected to the control system. So corporate networks usually have web servers and web pages that are open to the internet and so it means anyone can come in. It's definitely an area that we have to treat very carefully and we have an arrangement set up where information is exported from the SCADA system and then is collected in another part of the corporate data network. So there's no connection that allows you to get into the SCADA. Every time we've evaluated one, we've found that we've been able to break through from the corporate network to the control network. No matter what they've done, we've always found a way through. There is no such thing as a secure system. There's just varying degrees of insecurity. The power grid seems fairly well covered, but many other critical SCADA systems are online and vulnerable. A quick internet search reveals numerous possible targets. So why has there only been a handful of successful attacks on SCADA systems worldwide? No one wants to start a war. If you, if you really do something ludicrously overtly, then you are just asking for someone to respond in a physical way. So we do it all sneaky. We do it all in the back door. An attack on the electrical grid is not the only way to sap a nation of its power. Steal the secrets that make a country wealthy and you slowly bleed it dry while hardly anyone notices. It was from this nondescript building in Shanghai that attacks were launched on over 140 major US businesses. Computer security company Mondion even recorded screen grabs as China's cyber army stole hundreds of terabytes of intellectual property. The US claims China is behind the biggest transfer of wealth in history. There's no doubt that uh, any significant IP uh, possessed by Australian universities, research institutes or corporations is under constant attack by probably foreign governments more than anyone who have a strong interest in transferring that IP to their own nation. Establishing the real impact of these types of attacks is impossible when most go unreported. Well, I think we need legislation to compel uh, governments and corporates to actually come clean to say what has happened. Industry self-regulation in this regard hasn't worked. But it can be hard to come clean when you're unaware of being hacked in the first place. We've certainly seen situations where we've been called in to talk to businesses who have been penetrated for months and months and months and only detected it by accident. We look at security as being three things, prevention, detection, and response. Businesses have historically spent an awful lot on prevention. They spend a lot of time and effort building firewalls and building protection mechanisms that they're absolutely certain will work. But if they were attacked, would they know? To be adequately prepared, businesses need a greater focus on intruder detection systems and isolating or repairing any damage that occurs. New protocols need to be designed and also the actual devices themselves have to be designed to be cyber secure. It's fair to say that if you're a determined nation state or a determined criminal group that you can own systems, there's no doubt. Uh, the biggest question is how long you own them for and how much damage you do when you're inside those systems.